In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the E6B flight computer to calculate the radius of action. The radius of action is the maximum distance you could fly to and return safely back given the amount of fuel remaining in the aircraft. In order to calculate this, we will need three pieces of information which should be fairly obvious. We'll need to know how much fuel is left in the airplane. We'll need to know, given the course on the way out, what will be the ground speed and Similarly, what will be the ground speed on the way back when we fly the reciprocal heading? Now, in order to calculate the ground speed, I'll have a link to my tutorial on ground speeds. In terms of the fuel, we'll have to keep a running total based on our fuel burn as we're going through our flight plan, and then we can add up and see how much fuel we've used, subtract that from the starting amount of fuel, and that'll give us an in-flight estimate of how much fuel we have remaining and we can use that value to calculate the total range for the radius of action. Alright, so let's put this to use. Let's calculate what's the radius of action in our airplane. I'm going to assume that we're in a Cessna 172. We're going 110 knots indicated airspeed. We know from experience that our fuel burn at this airspeed is around 10 gallons an hour most of the time, so we'll use that number. We calculate the amount of fuel we've burned so far based on the legs of our flight, and we subtract that from the fuel we loaded into the aircraft when we started, which is usually about 54 gallons. So now we've got 30 gallons remaining in the tanks. What we need to do is convert that 30 gallons into an estimate of how much time will that let us stay in the air? Well, 30 gallons at 10 gallons an hour is very easy to deduce that it's going to be three hours. If the numbers are not this nice, you'll have to use the flight computer. And I have a tutorial and a link to doing that calculation uh, for more complex uh, problems. So we've got the uh, time that we're going to be in the air. Next we need to know, well, what's our ground speeds? For the heading outbound, we find or calculate that our ground speed will be 130 knots. On the reciprocal inbound leg, we find that our head, our ground speed will be 105 knots. And these calculations are again based on using the data we got for the winds aloft and the course that we find by looking at the sectional chart in the air. So. All we got to do now is add the two ground speeds, 130 knots plus 105 knots is 235 knots total and three hours of flight time. So all we're going to do is find the total ground speed, 235 knots on the outside stationary scale and line that up with three hours of flight time on the inside rotating scale. Then all we have to do is swing around until we get to the ground speed for the return portion of the flight, which we said was 105 knots. Swing in to the inner scale and we see that it's 80 minutes or equivalently one hour and 20 minutes of flight time. So we can fly one hour and 20 minutes before we have to turn around and come back. So the next question is, if I fly out for one hour and 20 minutes and my ground speed out is 130 knots, how far can I go before I have to turn back? Well, all we have to do is solve that like a time and distance problem. So take your pointer, point that to 130 knots ground speed. Then you'll go around until you find the time and move out. So let's try that. So now I've got the index pointing to 130 knots ground speed. We said we'll be flying that for one hour and 20 minutes. And if we move to the outside scale, what we find is that it is about 172.4. So we can go 174 nautical miles for an hour and 20 minutes before we have to turn around. And it's really that simple. 